Hey, Clara and Elena, day five of the dating challenge. Wow, what a challenge it's been. What an intense time. And how the nightingales have been with us. Mm. I want to say today something about love. Right? You've been mo discovered how you can move past that biggest hurdle in dating, how to start attracting the great man. Maybe you're already doing it. Maybe you're seeing your sisters doing it and know that you have the tools. What, what is it actually that we're looking for? True love. And it's so deep. It's so big. And somewhere deep down, everybody knows it's the most fulfilling thing in life. What gives us the most meaning. What really uplifts us. When we are sick, when we are broken, love is the thing that makes our days beautiful anyhow. When we are on top of the world and shining our light, love is the thing that bridges us to other people. When we come home tired, love is the pillow on which we lay our tired head. Love is the juice that quenches our thirst for being together, for connection, for remembering that we are part of something bigger. Love is the beauty of intimacy, of going beyond the human state and discovering there is a connection on soul level, a total connection, not restrained by anything human, not restrained by time or space, not restrained by bodies and shyness, not restrained by fear, not even restrained by addictions, substance abuse. We love no matter what. Love connects us back to life itself. Some say love is life. Life is love. Our culture is very far from this love. We've become to think very pragmatic about love. Which is part of why we're not looking for it anymore. We fear it. Maybe I should say it this way. We fear it. When a woman says, I want love, everybody's kind of like, oh, ooh, take care. You know, you might be um, losing yourself. You might be not be happy. You might be not find it. All these concerns, like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Same as around feminine sexuality, right? Same thing. Who? take care about that feminist sexuality don't go there for a long time they said it to women who wants to become an artist who oh, oh, don't do that don't do that what it all is it's a fear of the feminine it's a fear of life it's a fear of being part of this beautiful mother earth it's a fear of living the gift of life that we have been given and we continue that lie towards each other. It's big in our culture. And we're all asked to develop ourselves in our work, which is amazing and I love doing it. But nobody tells you now go and evolve yourself in love. Many of the things that you learn in business, you can also learn in love. And many of the things you can never learn in business, you can learn in love. There's nothing as intimate as spending your days and your nights with one human being, sleeping in the same bed, being together on the journey when the sexual energy arouses, arises, arouses. Nothing as intimate as that. Being with the other when you're tired and down and sick. Being with the other when you come on and you think you're gold, and you are. Nothing as intimate, nothing as vulnerable. Once we find love, we could lose it. Nothing as vulnerable, 
nothing is fulfilling. Nothing helping us more to come into that human state where we transcend the ego, where we transcend the limitations that we put around ourselves, that isolate ourselves. When we are one-on-one -on -one living with a person, it shows us your limitations. How? Because the other cannot bear them. Because the other has other limitations and other ways to deal with life. And you're rubbing against each other's limitations. And that doesn't leave you rest until you move beyond. If you think you can solve it by changing him, you're going to have a hard ride. And maybe that's part of what is holding you back. Maybe part of you is like, yeah, I want love. The dream. I don't want the reality of love. <laughs> I want the dream of love. I don't want this actually having somebody rubbing against my self-inflicted limitations. I want freedom. Yes, you want freedom. But do you want freedom by telling yourself you're free or by actually coming out of your cage? That's the difference. Love helps us to actually come out of the cage like nothing else. These are things you learn nowhere else in life. And if you don't learn it in dating, guess what? Relationships are going to painful, awkward drama, pleasing, giving yourself away, losing your power, divorce, and then blaming the other. And the drama continues even if the love is gone. But guess what? So learn this lesson now in dating. It's the perfect time. That's why the divine, however you want to call it, created this challenge of dating, of finding a partner, so that we could learn these things. So if you're rubbing up against limitations now, if you're not actually doing what you want to be doing in this challenge, that's exactly the beginning. That's where love begins. Love is now the calling of love, showing you your limitations and showing you, wow, I have a choice here. Either I just turn my head the other way and say, well, there was something wrong with the challenge, was something wrong with the timing, or we actually go and do something about it. It's like, oh, wow, I'm running up against the limitation of myself here. Who? let's own that. Let's find a new way to be with me and my limitations. Let's find a way to grow. That is the doorway to love. That is what we may learn in dating. Is there something that I have learned in these two years of guiding women on the dating journey? It is that dating is a transformational time, a transformational journey, a quest. A quest is a journey that invites you to reach a goal in the outer world and transforms you in the inner world together. That's a quest. Dating is a quest. It's here to change you. It's here to show you that you can have things in the world, but you need to show up. And how do you show up? By meeting your limitations and finding new ways to deal with them. You won't get there. The quest is designed so that you won't get there if you don't go beyond your own ego now. If you don't shift your beliefs, shift your thinking, shift your action. Think the old way and you're not going to get there. This is so beautiful about dating. And once you get that, the I mean, this was happening in my groups, right? I am a quest person. I've been guiding vision quests for 20 years. I am a quest person. I was bringing this to dating for, from day one. But I was not aware of it. And I was not aware how important it was until recently. And it's changed everything. It's become more effective what I do. The women, they, they, they thank me for finding their partner, but they thank me even more for finding themselves, for finding this way to keep growing within an intimate relationship. 
to find this way that a relationship doesn't mean putting a lid on life, putting a lid on your career, putting a lid on self-growth. Relationships means a doorway to faster growth because it lets you grow faster and because it shows you exactly the most deep places where others can't reach. That's what they thank me for most. And that's what is giving me the courage to go with this message in the world. Because everything we think we know about dating is wrong. Maybe that's the biggest conclusion of these five days challenge. Everything we thought we knew about dating is wrong. It's not just a journey to get the right man. It's a quest. It's an inner journey with an outer outcome. The inner and the outer, they dance together. And when you can allow that dance to happen, you can dance with your man and he will dance right into your life. That is what dating is. Dating is every minute of the day. It's not only when you chat with him. It's not only when you are on the dating app. It's not only when you're physically having a date. A dating is a transitional time of your life. Just like puberty is a transitional time of your life. Dating is a transitional time of your life. And dating is about... Um, puberty is about finding your place as a grown-up. Moving from being a child to being a grown-up. Moving from having others take care of you to taking care of yourself and then taking care of others. Dating is moving from being in the hub of your family, being emotionally taken care of, living in somebody else's house, right? To living in your own house and having others live with you. From being the daughter to becoming the beloved and the mother. It's that transition. You're shifting to a new role. And this is all, dating is all about love and the emotional. How will you learn, teach, how will you teach your children to love? How will you not only make sure that they have good grades at school? How will you teach them to love and to be better friends? How will you teach them to grow as a person? To meet their challenges ever in new ways? That is what you're learning right here. How will you make sure that around you people are happy? Even if the whole world is going to pieces, which it is. Well... I hope not. There's so many signs that things are changing because we are starting to get these things. Because we are transforming. The world needs us to transform. We are in the biggest crisis. But we are playing it out on the earth. But to bring it back here, you need to learn how that everybody can be happy around you. Even when you're in a bad mood, you don't have to be happy and smiley all the time. But how do you do that then? What is that? That people really feel good around you and want to be around you. And feel like, ah, ah, she came home. Now everything is okay. How do you create that feeling? How do you create a home? All those of things. Where do you learn that in our modern culture? Nowhere. Well, that's changing right now. I'm starting a movement of love quests, coaches. I don't think I want to call it dating coaches because we have those old associations with it. Though originally dating was a beautiful word. So maybe I do want to call it dating coach, but I also want to call it a love quest coach, a love quest mentor. That's where you will learn these things. And it will benefit you. I mean, think of that. When your man can really feel that, like, ah, okay, she's home. Everything is okay now. Without you having to sh shift anything about how you are. Without you having to, pre pre to be pretending you're in a great mood. How awesome would that be? How awesome that your man feels like there's nobody that's home like my wife. That it's no longer about whether he's sexually attracted to somebody else or not. Of course he is. But that's no longer what is important. He found something bigger. He found a beloved with whom he can grow. 
and with whom life is life. Life is being lived at the max. With whom he can change beyond the status quo and the nonsense of our time and find an emotionally rich life where his heart can be open and he can share things that he never shared before. Who cares about a bit of sex when we can have this? And how awesome is sex when you have it with a person with whom you have this? Then it's no longer about that initial chemistry. Then it's about totally opening up to life together and allowing the, all the energies of the universe to put you on fire and put him on fire and burn through all the last limitations and let you merge totally with the infiniteness of who you are that sacred sexuality and that is what i see for you so this is my rant on dating and on how dating is something very different from what we ever thought it could be and how it's so much more beautiful and how it's an amazing thing to allow somebody to introduce you to this because if you hear this once one ear in one ear out but if there's somebody who's holding this vision with you you can start living it doing it transforming your life and the lives of the people around you and who knows maybe after you found love in your life and this way to grow maybe you feel wow i want to become a love quest coach now i want to guide others on this path and that's my next step reaching first more women some of you know that i'm really active and this challenge of course is part of it starting to get my message out to way more women. The world needs to hear that. All the cost of divorce, of unhappy marriages, if somebody would put an economic calculation on it, we would understand that it's the first problem in our world we need to solve. Well, maybe accept how we are with the earth, but they're more connected than you think. Because it's about relationship, it's about love. We would understand this is the first thing we need to solve, but nobody takes it seriously. Ah, oh, she's single, oh, the poor girl. We stigmatize the persons who are sick, just as with cancer. We stigmatize the person who has cancer. Instead of seeing, hey, wait a moment, what are we doing to our daughters, our mothers, our fathers, our brothers? What are we doing? We us the culture this is something we but how much more money is there going towards cancer research than towards research how we solve divorce well here is how we solve divorce by prevention by teaching people what they need to know in the time they're dating when they're about to meet their partner first moments are golden patterns are set and they're set in stone Make sure that the person is ready when they meet their partner, that that first what is engraved in stone is right. And maybe we cannot pre prevent 100% of divorce, but we can do so much and we can make the journey so much gentler. And even if there's no divorce, we can make that journey of relationship, of partnership, of family, marriage, so much more happy and fulfilling so that there is so much more energy to give to what is needed in our world. So maybe you too feel like this is my path. I'm being called. My calling for love is not just a personal calling. It is. I want to find love in my life first. But something bigger is happening. I want to ride on this new wave of love. I want to be one of the messengers. And I know that when I have it, I will start giving it to others. Maybe that is you. Whichever way, now is day five of the challenge. If you are lagging behind, take it as an opportunity to start doing it. Maybe with a new fire, now that you heard this new context. And yeah, go for it. 
maybe you're already right there and you can just do your delicious meditations and receive some beautiful chat messages and celebrate that the magic is happening. Tonight, this afternoon, 3 p.m. Amsterdam time, 2 p.m. London, we will celebrate what has happened and we will look more at how you can continue wherever you are now so that the love actually happens in your life and the lives of those around you. For now, have an awesome day and I'll see you 3 p.m. The link to register is in the emails. See you there. Aloha.